Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectors meeting for May, Monday, May 13th, 2013. Our first item is the consent agenda. Uh, we've got meeting of minutes for April 22nd, 2013. We have a request for a one day beer and wine license for May 19th at, uh, here at Town Hall for a rack tie. Uh, we have a request one day all alcohol license for uh, May 18th for Fidelity House's annual fundraiser. We have three new election workers to be appointed, Donna Agostino, Elizabeth A. McDaniel, and Vincent A. Natal. We have two reappointments to the uh, Arlington Community Tourism and Economic Development, also known as ATED, Angela Olszewski and Thomas Davison. We have a request for a contractor drain layer license from Lazaro Paving Corporation in Shirley, Mass., and a permit for the Memorial Day Parade, which will be held on May 27th, Requested by our Director of Veteran Services, William McCarthy. Move approval. Second. I have one uh, change that I'd like to make to the minutes, if the board would agree, which is in the very be first item, so as Mr. Dunn asked the board voted to amend the Board of Selectmen report, I'd like it noted that that was something that wasn't on the agenda that we tackled because we couldn't have anticipated it. This is on the minutes of uh, April 22nd. Is there any objection to that change? Objection. No. Okay. No objection. All right, so we have a motion, we have an amendment. Any other discussion? Is anyone here who would like to talk about any of those I events or licenses or anything that I just called off? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, consent agenda is done. Um, I'm going to pull one item out of order, and that is number 12, Selectman Liaison to the Battle Road Scenic Byway Task Force. Clarissa Rowe, welcome back. Thank you so much. I'm here and I'll uh, hand out these, um, this information for all of you. Thank you. As some of you know, Arlington is one of four towns that is part of the Battle Road Scenic Byway. The work to date has been an inventory and there's a report that I gave um, to some of you that weren't involved before. There's been a hiatus of two years. It's, they've just gotten another grant. Our group has just gotten another grant through the MAPC to put together an implement, implementation program, and that's what we will be working on for the next, probably through the summer into the fall. But I'm here tonight to ask you to appoint a selectman's liaison from um, the town of Arlington. Um, Diane and I were both the selectmen that were on the initial um, report, and I would welcome any of you to take my place if you'd like to. Mr. Greeley. Much as I want to, I could not possibly do the job that has been done by Clarissa. I'd like to move that Clarissa remain as our liaison. Second. That be appropriate? That would be fine. There are quite a lot of meetings. I will be in the summertime bringing back some memorandums between the town, which obviously I can't execute, that you would have to execute. I will actually be calling on Mrs. Rice and Mr. Chapdelaine to talk about what kind of legal entity we want to create, but I think it's a, it's a great step forward. Um, in the next, after this implement, implementation period, there might be money involved. So. Um, you'll hear from me. Move that nominations be closed. Uh, Adam? Uh, not, not wanting to add uh, work for any board member, but I had noticed that each community as part of this has two representatives from the town. Yes. As well as a board member liaison, so would we be under-representing people-wise? I, I would people? think it would be great if either, well, probably Angela was appointed in my place as a member, because she goes to every meeting. 
Howard Winkler also, except I think that he may be moving out of Arlington. He's moved. So he'll come to every meeting anyway, because he's been very involved. So l let me suggest as far as that goes, I, I know that Ms. Rawl and I have a meeting with the um, Tourism and Economic Development Committee on Wednesday, which mm -hmm. I, I think grew out of this, this right. initiative. And, and so maybe we can raise it there and, right. and find out if there's interest from right. e either Ms. Olsuski or, or I know she else. she wants to come as we drive out together, but you know, could, it's up to you. But I, to, if that's yeah. acceptable, we could come back to the board if we need another representative. In so you'll, you'll be at that meeting? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And Ms. Rowe will also. Uh, is that, Adam, oh, is that? Well, I, I would just, I mean, uh, Angela's not here tonight, right? I would recommend we appoint her as well uh, with the caveat that she accept. Um, okay. I'm, I'm a, that's a, I think that's and fine. it seems like that, you know, they're looking for a selectman too, and if a guy's already on ATED, you know, wouldn't it make sense <laughs> that if he could make some of these meetings as well? So I'd like to amend my original motion to Clarissa Rowe, Angela Olszewski, and as a selectman, Mr. Joe Curo. I know he's on 28 committees, but don't you think it makes sense for you to be on this one too? I don't know if we have that option, though, yeah. reading this. I don't know. Don't we? Uh, um, anybody can come to the meetings, and, and we do have a planning representative. Either Laura Weiner or Ted Fields will be coming. It's a special interest of the, um, our community development and planning director as well so it looked like the organizational charter didn't didn't allow that so on page two it says two representatives from each town and then one board of selectmen liaison but Laura might be one of our representatives so the two representatives includes a selectman liaison that would be three so it would be Laura plus Clarissa oh, plus because oh, oh, oh. you want somebody that really does the work okay so so I'll shut up. I'm not trying to shirk any duties. I just don't know what, what, <laughs> no, what no, time I, I, of these I meetings. I thought Laura wasn't, didn't want to do it any longer or something. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so those three. I'm let's three with, this, with the explicit caveat that if Angela is not interested, then we'll find somebody else to, to do it. Yeah, excellent. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank For you, zero. gentlemen. Thank um, you. I appreciate you taking me out of order. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, nice see you all. Good to see you, too. I, should, I meant to mention in the very beginning, uh, Diane Mahan has a family event, and she'll be she may be joining us late, depending upon when that event lets out. Um, I meant to say that in the beginning. I apologize. Uh, all right, returning to the order, item number two: newly appointed economic development planner. Carol, you've got an introduction for us. Yes, I'm happy to have a chance to introduce to you our new economic development planner, Ted Fields. Ted comes to us from having been the community development planner in Framingham and before that in the city of Waltham. Ted was on the redevelopment board for a couple of years and uh, I was almost wistful <laughs> when he submitted his um, resume because he did such a great job on the redevelopment board. But once we started interviewing him, I realized that he had uh, a lot of skills and technical experience that I didn't even realize he had. Uh, so we are very fortunate to have Ted Fields. Uh, he started April 29th, and he's uh, already making a difference, but I'm going to let you um, hear a little bit about it from him. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Fields. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to serve the town and to help uh, increase the economic activity in the town and uh, make the... Uh, tax base and the fiscal systems of the town more robust for future years. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background? Like, tell us sure. about Framingham and what, whatever else uh, is relevant. Sure. Uh, I started working as a planner uh, for the city of New York. Uh, then I moved into the community development area uh, back in the late 90s when I worked for the city of Newton. And then I moved to Waltham, uh, where I ran the community development program there eventually became the assistant director and two years ago I moved to Framingham to run their community development program and then uh, this opportunity to work here in town came up and uh, here I am. So I have long service in the community development field. Steve. Thanks. Yeah, I, I have one quick question. I was sure. reading um, through the press release uh, the town manager sent out and it talks about the uh, 
achieving a designated main streets downtown revitalization effort. Yes. That seems like something that might be pertinent. Uh, can you kind of ex uh, explain that a little bit? Sure. That was, uh, that took advantage of some unique demographics in Framingham's downtown <laughs> where you have a, a very large concentration of very low income housing um, next to the historic downtown, which has gone through a number of life cycle changes. Uh, the advent of Route 9 and Route 30 in the Golden Triangle really sucked a lot of economic vitality out of the old downtown, along with factory closures and whatnot. So we used that, uh, the, the plan designation uh, to target block grant funds from the federal government to start a Main Streets program that has really done a great job in working with immigrant business owners uh, to really revitalize the downtown. Thank you. Mr. Greeley? Yeah. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent service on the Redevelopment Board. And Thank you. What will surely be excellent <laughs> service here. Uh, will you miss town meeting at all? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Framingham town meeting is uh, renowned for its, uh, the depth of its debate and the length of its debate. <laughs> I think they went seven weeks last year. Uh, so uh, I, it's, it's nothing new to me. I'm, I'm used to uh, robust I think, discussion. Uh, I think 14 is our record, although it's six this year. It's always. Okay. <laughs> so I wondered, you know, um, let's say if we took a corridor like oh, East Arlington, mm -hmm. do you think a, uh, are you, f you familiar with that project? Uh, 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 yes. Uh, you think that would be good for the economic development of that region? The reconstructing the mass, yes, I think it would be. That's one of those, I think I knew that answer before. <laughs> Look forward to working with you. Thank, thank you. For being here. Uh, thank you very much. We're very happy that you're on. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Ted. Uh, I know we've we've encountered one another uh, <laughs> off and on over the years. You've been on uh, redevelopment board. Um, I think you know that a lot of folks are looking at really kind of the inseparability of uh, the arts and economic yes. development in town. There's a lot of interest. Um, you know, we had talked a bit with the the last economic development mm -hmm. director around this with the cultural commission right. and it came up at town meeting about the you know the um, interest in promoting busking and such and I don't know if you've you know put any thought into how that sure. might translate here um, in Arlington yes uh, I have as a matter of fact I have a meeting tomorrow with the uh, the film festival uh, right. folks and I think uh, those type of festivals are an excellent opportunity to increase foot traffic in our commercial corridors, uh, especially uh, in different seasons. And um, I would look to build upon existing programs to augment them. Uh, also in Framingham, I launched an initiative to use federal funds to try to attract uh, artists and creative professionals to live around the downtown, mm. um, kind of as pioneers, uh, similar to what we saw in the Seaport District where mm. artists moved in and revitalized the Fort Channel Fort Point Channel area years before there was a seaport district and and eventually they became priced out but the point is they really sowed the seeds for the regeneration we're seeing now sure. and uh, a lot of artists in Boston Somerville and Cambridge are being priced out of those towns by the property market and they're moving west north and south and I think it might be an opportunity to capture some of those folks to to set up shop uh, galleries, studios, and even residences here, and to use their vitality to uh, augment activity in the in the centers. Like what I'm hearing. <laughs> Thanks. We look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, if I could add one more. Oh, sorry, point. Kyle, please. Um, thank you. I, I think it's important to mention that uh, Ted has resigned from the redevelopment board, uh, so that's created a vacancy. So um, there is a, a call for candidates. It may be closing very soon, but um, we are looking for uh, a good candidates for that vacancy on the redevelopment board. Um, the, some of the board members have observed that they could use um, engineering assistance sometimes on special permit reviews, but um, we would also uh, welcome planners, because since Ted was our only planner on the board. But uh, anyone interested, um, if this is live, I'd love to make sure that we get their resume. And I wanted you to know that um, he has resigned from the redevelopment board. And they send resumes here or to Yes, they can send a resume to the town manager's office. Yes. Oh, town manager, okay. okay. And a letter of interest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, introduction of the Route 128 Business Council, Adam. All right, so I want to uh, introduce to the board uh, 
uh, from the Route 120 Business Council. Uh, introduce both of you, or you want to? <laughs> we have Monica Tibbetts, who's an Arlington resident, uh, the executive director of, uh, of the Route 120 Business Council, as well as Patrick Sullivan. Patrick, what's your title? I'm the director of policy and outreach. Director of policy and outreach. Arlington, born and raised, recently <laughs> moved out of Arlington. Uh, that was but, a mistake. <laughs> Agreed. But, uh, but we're, uh, we're lucky to have two people who know Arlington very well. But with that said, Route 128 Business Council is the Transportation, uh, Transportation Management Association. Lexington was the first municipality to join Arlington, I believe, would be the second. Uh, and we're looking, uh, as part of this membership, for some very specific uh, help or work from them. And I let, I'll let Patrick talk a little bit about it. But we're very interested in seeing how we can better manage or better provide transportation for folks who live in Arlington to get to the 128 corridor where they may work. Um, <clears throat> so we're using uh, CDBG planning money uh, to enter into this membership. Uh, but they can offer that service, uh, but they also have a wide range of planning services they can offer us, which can really enhance what we can do in our planning, uh, within our planning department and help us with the master plan. So Patrick, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the Route 20 Business Council and what you plan to bring to Arlington? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, thank you for inviting us this evening. Um, the 128 Business Council is a transportation management association um, that's been in existence for 25 years. Um, we're located in Waltham, and we provide a range of transportation demand management services. Those services range from traditional carpool matching and guaranteed ride home programs to um, commuter shuttle um, services. Uh, we currently operate 11 different commuter shuttles right now. Um, six of which um, originate out of Alewife Station and bring commuters from Alewife out to office parks in the Lexington and Waltham area. Um, myself and Monica, we're both uh, trained planners and we have um, been working, as Adam mentioned, with the town of Lexington um, on a number of different initiatives to help um, address transportation issues they see in the town, whether it be with their Lexpress system. Um, we work with them from everything from redesigning the logo that you see on the Lexpress vehicle to looking at some of their uh, routing. Um, and we're also working with the town's economic development um, director on um, providing more transportation, public transportation service to the Hartwell Ave area where they have a number of businesses and they're looking to um, provide um, more options for commuters in that area. So working with the town manager's office as well as with um, the planning department, um, we've come up with a work plan of um, a few very specific projects um, to help Arlington. Um, the first being we're gonna take a, a look at some zip code data, journey to work data, um, and see if we can help Arlington residents, Arlington commuters um, get to work uh, in a more reasonable manner. Um, so whether they work in the 128 quarter and perhaps there's an opportunity for them to use the existing um, shuttles that we provide, or if there are opportunities for other transit um, opportunities in um, any, emanating from Arlington going out anywhere. Um, that's something we're gonna examine. We're also gonna take a look at um, or we're gonna work with the Economic Development and Tourism uh, Committee to develop a series of maps. And these maps are gonna highlight the historic sites in Arlington. And what we hope to do with these maps is point out um, not, just, um, not just your standard map, but we wanna show how these sites are connected to or can be connected to from um, both bike, pedestrian, uh, public transportation, um, so multimodal access points. Questions? Well, thank you very much. I, I am very excited about um, about this that we've brought, brought you on. Um, my, my own company is actually a corporate member um, of, of the Business Council out on uh, Route 128, and I know that um, on a case, I've had occasion to use your, your shuttle service, but it had always struck me that in order to do that, you have to go into Alewife, and then it skips right over Arlington and then makes frequent stops along along the way, Lexington, Waltham, lots of places. And we know we have a lot of, um, we just know anecdotally, we have a lot of people who are you know, tech workers and workers in financial sectors who are working out there. I know from the other end of my own company that when we did um, you know, survey data of the, the communities where people lived, I think Arlington was the second or third, third highest. So um, I, I think there may be a match. Uh, I'm very interested in, in what we have, um, what you've laid out as your initial work um, 
especially the third point in the, the planning director's uh, memo to us about um, possible shuttle service from Alewife wife's station to points in Arlington that may be hard to access without a car, such as weekend service to the SIM site. Um, in our packet this evening, I think we saw that the MBTA has agreed to recommence bus service up to uh, that large um, development, which includes a, a large surrounding uh, neighborhood, but that's only during the week. So I'm very interested that, that, that this is one of the uh, places that you're going to be um, uh, examining. So um, anything we can do to, to try to, uh, you know, support and, and retain the folks who are, who are living here in Arlington, and maybe some of those commuters, commuters when they're on their way back to Alewife, you know, will decide to get off, get off the shuttle and have dinner here in, in town, and uh, I'm very excited about it. So, um, thank you. You know, thanks. We look forward to working with you, Steve. Um, no, I think it's interesting with our first, um, our first three agenda items tonight. How they're all kind of intertwined. Um, I think it really shows our commitment, and I'd like to thank the town manager for that. To, you know, really improving on the economic development in Arlington. Um, one question I did have. Is, uh, and I am excited about this, as Mr. Kira said. I know he's brought this up before, and especially at our regional uh, meeting with the people from other communities, um, this came up as well. Is um, with this um, Arlington, you know, it talks about our membership fees, what, and then it talks about the study and the uh, analysis of it. What comes, I guess, with being a member of the 128 Business Council? You know, can you kind of give a small overview of that? What will, you know, as opposed to the I guess you look at it as the study and analysis, and then moving forward, do you think it's, I guess, would it be likely that we can enhance on that? Do you anticipate it? Um, I, I do, I do. Um, the way we calculate that yearly membership fee is, is pretty simple. It's based on the number of residents in the community. Um, and what we did during our initial meetings with the town manager and with the planning department was discuss what that fee would be and then within that fee the variety of services we could offer. Um, one, one place where I think there might be an opportunity to expand upon the work we're doing right now is that when we're developing the maps that I referenced and we're working with the um, Economic Development and, and Tourism Committee, um, we hope to work very closely, very collaboratively with them. and. During that work, if there's something else that comes out of that, we'll be certainly be happy to take the ball and run with it on that as well. So if there um, is a certain part of town where maybe we want to highlight restaurants in East Arlington, for example, maybe th there's an opportunity to build a map around that or a marketing campaign around that, that's something we can certainly explore. Awesome. No, it's very cool. I look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um Thank you very much for being here. My office is on Wyman Street in Waltham. <laughs> and, but I really don't know much about this, but I've seen the shuttle going by, and I wonder, where could I get that? But now I hear it's at our wife. Mm -hmm. Would there be a process to figure out whether it could do a couple stops in Arlington or not? Or would well, that absolutely. be based on your survey? Or Yes, we're going we're gonna to look at, um, again, census, and zip code, census data from Arlington residents. Um, take some zip code data, put some maps together to see where um, they're called journey to work maps to look at where people are going. We also have a lot of data from some of the employers in Waltham. And what we can do is look at that data as well and see how many Arlington residents um, they're reporting are living in those communities and determine if that's something we would want to um, move forward with. And, and uh, how do you coordinate with MBTA? I assume the shuttles are where they're not going, right? That's correct. For the most part, um, we don't run redundant service with the MBTA. Um, because we've been in existence for 25 years, we've been operating these shuttles for so long, um, we've developed a collaborative relationship with MBTA. So they're well aware of the routes that we run. We share our ridership data with them so they're, they know who's getting onto our vehicles. And, um, you know, we've, in the three years I've been with the business council, I can't think of any instances where we've ever had any disagreement or fights between fights. the drivers or anything. <laughs> like that. No, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank yeah. you. Have you considered a helicopter service for the roof of Alewife? <laughs> <laughs> I think that would make a lot of sense. The the monorail running <laughs> underneath Mass Ave is the first project we're looking at. <laughs> Yay! <Yeah. laughs> How many lanes will that monorail take? <laughs> <laughs> Diane, we're saying welcome. Did you have any? Thanks. 
Bill, anything else you wanted to add? No, no, All thank right. you. Sorry I was late. I apologize. <laughs> thank you both very much for coming. Did you have anything you want to say? Or you? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Welcome. We're looking forward to doing more things. Thanks again. We're looking forward to working with oh, the town. I'm sorry. I think, yep, Excuse not for Pat, but I would like to point out that Monica is on the Master Plan Advisory Committee, so it is oh, very sweet. cool that this is all going on at the same time. That is excellent. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right. Uh, next up, we have Leslie Ellis School Request, School Zone Designation, Foster and Tuff Streets. I think that the appropriate thing for this is uh, or do you, so I just, I, I want, if I may. Yeah, please. I just wanted to introduce Mike Bowden, who I believe most of you have met individually, but Mike is the new management analyst in the town manager's office. Yep. And he has duties both in terms of the town manager's office, uh, putting together budgetary documents, but also managing the town's rental properties, uh, such as the Parmenter, the Gibbs, the Dallin Library. Uh, so he prepared a memo in regards to uh, requests for a school zone designation uh, for Foster and Tuff Street, and I wanted him to have an opportunity to speak to the board about it. He's the man that I had no idea what his name was That's during correct. town meeting. <laughs> 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 when I was doing the introductions going A around great the job running the <laughs> <laughs> And whoever that is. Welcome very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I did introduce myself afterwards. <laughs> you did. You did. Yeah. Um, as Adam said, I also have responsibilities in addition to the financial aspect in managing uh, the town rental properties. And a few weeks ago, um, the school nurse from Leslie Ellis, a tenant of the Gibbs School, uh, requested that we investigate putting up school zonage signs on Tufts and Foster Street, the two streets that abut the Gibbs property. Um, specifically, she had noted drivers um, driving over the speed limit down both of those, those uh, streets, and she was hoping that the town could do something as landlord to sort of remedy that situation. Um, so before um, I made the proposal, I, I looked into it a little bit, and as you may know, the Gibbs School also has another school, uh, Learn to Grow, and it also holds um, the Kelleher Center, which uh, counts among its clients some uh, physically and mentally disabled individuals. So this idea really made sense. Um, and before coming to you, I spoke with Officer Corey Rateau of the um, Traffic um, Advisory or Traffic Enforcement Division, and um, found out some interesting things. First, that um, their initial request was for a slow children designated sign. Um, he found that in um, other communities that never works. People actually disregard that because it's not, it's not specific enough. It's vague. They don't know where the children are. The, uh, a residential area could be anywhere. Um, so he suggested the school zone signage because uh, people associate that with higher fees and things like that, and it may deter people even more from um, speeding. So I come to you uh, echoing that recommendation, asking that uh, this be brought to the... Um, Traffic Advisory or um, Transportation Advisory Committee to designate that area a school zone and to have proper signage uh, put up reflecting that. Kevin, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I believe we're the ones who would make that designation. Is that correct, Chris? Correct. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, Michael, welcome. Thank uh, you. Is there uh, is there a recommendation as to how many signs should be placed, or is there a standard yes. or anything on that already? Or we we suggested just two, um, one 50 feet from the school zone, uh, from the school property, uh, because both streets are one way. So uh, you would just need one as you go down Tufts and one as you come down uh, Foster as well. Well, I'd like to move that we do that, unless people really think we have to pass this through TAC for some reason. Second. <coughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, I just have one question on it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, you know, looking at the map, we also have Andrew and Raleigh coming into that uh, that mm -hmm. that uh, property also, and I, I wonder if for the school zone, if we have to mark that uh, on all four approaches. I, I lean towards sending it to TAC myself, but if the if, uh, but I certainly don't feel strongly. I, I'm certainly not opposed to the request. Mm -hmm. I just uh, was curious if they had any other suggestions or additions more than anything else. So, so I mean, maybe I mean I'd be inclined to vote the vote the motion, but 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 also send a request to, to find out if we need to actually no put objection. two more signs. I, I I I just feel we send them a lot, and I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm glad if that's if the board would feel more comfortable, let's, especially considering Joe's question. If you want to, what would they recommend? Steve, um, I I agree that um, I guess with everyone on the board for I do think that we send a lot to TAC, yeah. but 
I would be interested to see what else you know they might have to say on this matter as well. So I'd like I to change my motion to refer <laughs> to TAC. And I, I don't think you know if uh, they're at the Count they are doing right. quite a lot of pro they are focusing on many projects right now, and I think that with the scale of this, they might be able to you know, hopefully run through it a little more quickly. I, I think I feel I've, I've changed. I just yeah. second it, and I, I understand. Thank you, Mr. Greeley, for your. <laughs> <laughs> For your joy. And the, Four to uh, one. I'm on a roll, aren't I? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Any, other, any further? Mrs. Mo and I don't know if Mr. Carroll um, can aid us on this. I'm blanking, but I'm going it over in my head, um, especially on Tufts. Is that when you're going down the street? Where the Callahar Center is? I think, am I correct that all of our public elementary schools have that sign that during school hours, 7 to 9 or 7 to 8.30, and then in the afternoon, it flashes 20? Not, not all of them do. Not all of them? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some do. No, we have not put it in all places. So they're not in all the elementaries? I don't believe so. Are they at Brackett? They're, they're, they're at Dallin? Yeah, they're no, at Pierce? Sure. Um, they're going to be at Thompson? They're at Bishop? Okay, maybe I'm wrong. I can't think of any at Hardy. Can you come um, down Lake Street? Is I, I want to say... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when yeah. you come down, like, right by Herbert, where, um, yeah. not Pat Costa. Maybe in line with Mr. Greeley's uh, motion, if we could also ask TAC if they feel is this suitable, um, comparable to all the What's elementary that, schools. Okay. And if it is, can we get it in the queue? Understanding, you know, that can't happen overnight. That's a big thing. It's a cost, yeah. So it just... To be clear, we're looking at two signs now, a school zone sign and then the speed sign that reduces the speed during school hours. Okay. And, yeah. and, and whether we need them on the side street. And I'm sure TAC will come out, you know, they'll tell us what to do. Right. <laughs> TAC will study it for the next three weeks, so somebody at every corner, but they do, they're very thorough, yeah. they certainly will do a good job. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Next up, Taste of Arlington. From the Chamber of Commerce, who do we have? Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Bruce Fitzsimmons speaking tonight as a member of a board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this year, uh, the purpose of my being here is to invite the town to serve as a co-host for this year's Taste of Arlington, which is scheduled for October 22nd at the town hall. Uh, this event, which has proven to be very popular in the past, brings together local restaurants, and opens, uh, uh, invites the public to come in and enjoy sample menus. Uh, it's a way of promoting our local restaurant community. Uh, gives a great evening out for uh, members of the community. And it also helps defray some of the Chamber of Commerce's overhead expenses and uh, programming budget for other events uh, designed to support the business community. Um, you should have in your materials a letter from Randall Buck, who is this year's co-chair of the event. Uh, it gives a pretty good overview of uh, what the event is all about and what we're asking the town to do. Um, aside from being a co-host and having your co-sponsorship on various uh, uh, marketing materials, there's really not a lot of heavy lifting involved in this. Uh, we're not asking for a financial contribution, um, just a little bit of help in terms of marketing uh, the event. Uh, so if you have other questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Mr. Greeley? I move that we co-host and taste first all. <laughs> I'll go to all the restaurants first, Bruce. You You're going to do a, a, a dry run team. before you go? <laughs> no, but I, I move we co-host. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? I, I will second and, and note that the event is scheduled for my birthday, so I expect a big cake. To <laughs> yeah. We'll see what we can do, Joe. <laughs> Further discussion? No, that's great. Thanks. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. No. 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 All right, uh, next up we have public hearings. These were scheduled for 715, the, being past 715, we've met our legal requirements. And first up is uh, tabled from 422, we have Shafan K. Nath doing business as Airport Express. Would you come on up to the microphone, please? Good evening, sir. How are you? Pretty good, how about you? All right. So one of the questions that we had for you was uh, the color scheme or insignia to designate your vehicle. And uh, do you have, are you, and I get it, so I see that you, you've got a Toyota Sienna LE minivan that's silver, you've got a Toyota Avalon sedan that's black, mm -hmm. and you said full detail attached, and I've got like the 
picture of what the cars look like. Mm -hmm. Is there anything on the door, like paint on the door that signifies that it's a cab? No. That's it's the livery vehicle. Okay. But yeah. when, I, when I got the permit, if you give me the permit, then I can change it, everything. But what do you intend to put on the door? Uh, the logo. What logo? Uh, the Boston Air Force logo. That's it. Right up oh, it's this yeah. thing. Oh, it's, it's this. Yeah. Thank you. I now understand. I was confused. Any other, what other questions? Mrs. Mahan. Um, I have a question, and I believe you've done everything right. It's just sort of a standing question mm -hmm. that has come up with the Hackney licenses. And I just wanted to ask um, town council on, uh, I think it's the third or fourth page in the declaration sheet from Arbella. Some of the previous um, taxi hackney um, licenses and relicenses that we've uh, approved, um, specifically with the Globe, when they did that story, how some taxi companies weren't keeping very high policies of liability if somebody got hurt in the taxi cab. The way I read it here, I see that he has different, you know, twenty thousand each person, each accident, a million each accident. But, is this the kind of insurance policy that I was sort of going toward? Is this satisfied? The, the previous ones that have come in have only had like a thousand per accident or two thousand or something like that. But the way I read this, this has the higher limits. Right. What the board's um, regulations require is uh, twenty and forty. Mm -hmm. So um, this that's being um, supplied um, meets those requirements. Certainly, if the board uh, wished to amend its regulations to apply to renewals going forward, um, I'd be happy to work with them. But yeah, um, this application has 20 each person, 40 each accident, which is what's required in the regulations. And then the million is something over and above. Does that still apply to accidents for optional body bodily injury? Right. That's, um, I'm not an insurance expert, right. but um, yeah, that's an additional combined symbol, single limit. Right. Uh, and, and what I'm saying is, um, and this is great. So I, I don't want you sort of highlighting one that's on the higher end. And I've seen the one on the lower end. And I think this discussion that we began to have was that the town manager and town council um, were going to investigate this, see what the city of Boston does, and perhaps come back with some recommendations for the future. Because as a court reporter in medical malpractice, this is the kind of liability insurance policy I want to see. And the ones we've seen before, I mean, he's gone over and above what we require. Um, it, because that's what we require right now, not putting any other um, hackney or taxi company down because they're fulfilling our requirements. I just would like to, as the town manager, I believe, and town council are doing, just go through the exercise, see what the city of Boston and other cities and towns are doing, and maybe we need to, in the future, um, have a little bit higher so the liability policies look more like this. So I want to thank you, your insurance. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very before, much. I was concerned that, you know, our requirements were too low, but you went on the high end anyways. You have everything and, and then some more, so thank you. Ms. Greeley. Yeah, uh, this is for town council. Uh, on the registration, the certificate of re registration says livery, but we're licensing a taxi, correct? Correct. So that needs to be changed, correct? I'm not sure it's uh, registered any differently with the registry. And I think I asked this before, will inside the cab, will there be a meter? It should be a meter, yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. Mr. Curo. Um, I guess, I mean, my, my concern was the same as what Mr. Dunn raised at the beginning. I, I, I feel like we're getting closer here on the distinctive markings for the cab, but we're not quite there yet. I mean, I, I do see the logo now that you've pointed it out, although the, the two vehicles are different color schemes. Um, I don't see any reference to the, the contact information for the, for the cab company. Um, and I also couldn't help but notice that the, the email contact information for your cab company is exactly the same as the next applicant that we will be hearing. And I don't know, are you operating as separate companies? Uh, the, uh, no, he's, we work together. He's my co-worker. He worked for me. He's, he's uh, one car, but he worked for me. That's why you apply together. He had his own vehicle, his own name. So when I had an extra job, I give it to him. He helped me out. Okay. 
But when we when we are getting in touch with you via email, I mean, who who is the email going to? Is it going to you or going is it to going me. to you? It's going to you. Okay. So you're actually applying for three licenses. No, two, because he had his own car. He said, I can do my apply myself. But today, he said he's not coming. He had a, he's not feeling well. So, the Muhammad is not coming tonight because he cannot make it. He has, he's not feeling well, so. Steve. So, if he's not here, he won't be getting a license tonight. It's up to us, but. Yeah. Or, or, um, yeah, I, that's. Strange. I would like to see, you know, maybe a little bit more on the um, on the actual, you know, decal. But I think when it comes down to it, um, I I am comfortable with this license with this application, um, and I think that we have to look. You know, at least for me, I'd look at it as two separate ones, and I'd be less comfortable with how this next one is filled out as opposed to this one. So I would. Are you ready to make a motion? Um, I move. Uh, can I can I stop you? Yeah. Because I want to make a recommendation, Mr. Chairman. We have five to give out. Mm -hmm. We have seven applicants. Could I recommend, sir, we listen to all of them and then come back and actually decide? Do you know? I mean, if we give out five before we even reach number nine, how fair was that? Just because he's yeah. listed as number nine, we only have five to go. Uh, well, I think that's appropriate. I think we could do that, uh, and I'm okay with it if the rest of the board is. Uh, I will point, I, when we come to a decision time, six and seven did come to us earlier, and we tabled it, and I yeah. think that that should count in our decision in some way. Fair when we point. get to Fair weigh point. it. Fair point. Fair point. All right. But that's, that said, um, all right, is there any question? Is, is the rest of the board comfortable with am, yeah. hearing everybody and then? Yes. Okay. So why don't you have a seat? We're going to come back to a motion after we listen to everybody else. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Muhammad Shah, 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 excuse me, Shah Jahan. He's not here. Okay. Move the table. Oh, uh, did Mr. Byrne do that? Um, I'm sorry. I mean, so depending on how many licenses we give out, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, uh, Hackney License uh, Limolex, Daniel Kalantar. Daniel. So you came to us earlier this year. You got two licenses, yes. and you've been operating them both. Yes, this is I, good, I guess. Business is good. That's why it's called the good, uh, DBA Good Taxi. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for uh, the licenses that I've been uh, granted so far, and um, I currently operate three uh, taxi cabs in Arlington because I had a license prior to the uh, last request and um, uh, receiving the the last two, and uh, I think that. Uh, you know, this is a case of supply creating demand. You know, uh, I think that uh, uh, the town in the past might have been underserved uh, somewhat, and people were going for uh, an option that is different uh, from a taxi cab for airport transportation or whatever other uh, needs they may have. And I think now, uh, uh, I know that earlier there were concerns that there may be too many cabs in Arlington. Uh, I don't think that is uh, articulated itself so far. So. Uh, in short, uh, I'm happy with how the business is progressing. Uh, we're receiving a lot of positive feedback from uh, our customers in Arlington, uh, and we have those uh, reviews online and you know just verbally uh, and otherwise. Um, so, uh, just one thing I want to mention is that I haven't really uh, started very aggressively advertising in Arlington. I mean, we have an ad running in the uh, Advocate, uh, but uh, you know there may be more done uh, advertising and. I'm concerned that if I start doing that, which obviously I would like to, uh, you know, as a business owner to promote our name a little better, I may not be able to handle that demand unless I get a couple more vehicles. Uh, and so I come to you uh, with that request and uh, uh, hoping that, uh, uh, you know, we'll be able to uh, get more cabs and do uh, good to the people of Arlington uh, as we have so far. Questions from the board? It's really so do you own the cars now or you're saying if you get these two licenses you'll buy two more I have one and I'm planning to buy another one uh, if I get the license I know there is a 90 day uh, limitation uh, uh, window in which I have to uh, put those cars on the road but one is already available and the other one I'm just uh, trying to uh, 
fine because I'd like to, I have one minivan, two sedans right now, and I think there is demand for uh, minivans, so I would like to find a suitable vehicle um, that would uh, be able to transport uh, more people than uh, just a uh, you know, uh, maximum of four. Thank you. This is Mohan. And again, you've done everything right, so my questions aren't in, in any way a criticism. But on this um, particular liability insurance policy, this is what you see is the requirement that we have set forth. It's, so say take a combined single limit, CSL per accident. The previous um, uh, number six, he had a million dollar combined single limit. And right there, we're not requiring anything. And all those other boxes were, were filled out with. And that's not, this is not your fault. You, you're going by what we require. Um, and that's why I've asked the town manager and my colleagues for their indulgence to, you know, go down that road and, um, because that was one of the things that the city of Boston picked up on, that people were getting in accidents, and especially if somebody was uninsured or whatever. Um, we don't even require that. The previous application did that, and I think maybe that's just because he's been working in Boston and some other cities, or maybe not. So that's just an example of, thank you. So just, Mrs. Mahan, uh, just Mike's plan is to revisit the Hackney licenses in, say, roughly September. If you think we should feel a per hit it sooner than that, you know, let me know. I, I actually, uh, it, it, okay. the town manager and town council in, in their conversations, whomever, they think it should be sooner. <coughs> Otherwise, September is fine. Yeah, I think we talked about looping it in with the... Okay. okay. Thank you. Other questions? No. All right. No more questions. Uh, we're going to go through the list, then we're going to vote. May I just uh, yes. contribute something as far as the insurance limits? Please. Because I know uh, a couple of things of, uh, you know, the different towns' requirements. I think the city of Boston itself does not require insurance limits that are higher than what the town of Arlington requires. I think the entity that does require a very high insurance uh, liability limit is Massport. Mm -hmm. However, it does not require it of taxi cabs. It requires it of livery vehicles. So. And, and the city of Boston right now has what we have, which is the minimum 2040, but they're going through the exercise okay. of, okay. and it's been in the Globe, the Globe did a Globe spotlight. Right, 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 the mayor right. said, I agree, this is too low. They had three or four case points where people had you know, they lived, but they had $150,000, $200,000 right. worth of injuries, and there was no insurance, right. which but is... But I just want to comment on the million dollars where totally it comes great. from. That's exactly okay. it. So, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Abdullah Magan. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about your application and your experience? Um, uh, thank you again. And once again, I'm coming to you. Uh, about a few months ago, I applied... Uh, and I got it, uh, five uh, licenses, and um, we have been uh, set up everything. Uh, we have a uh, one handicap van and credit card system install all our caps. And we've been contacted by MBTA, who is also planning to have a Charlie card system be used at caps after hours, uh, I think through the city hall, they have contact and we've been get call and we are one of the caps that they have uh, want to do with the pilot program and we're anticipating uh, uh, expanded service and that's why I'm coming back to have a two more additional numbers. Are all of your licenses currently on the road? Yes. Questions? Hmm. Well, I just, so would you, the current cars could also do the Charlie card, or you need to have two new cars to do that? No, they can accept, but uh, I'll be adding the two new cars. In fact, I was trying to get uh, three as the, uh, the system, the, the, the people who are providing the data, mobile data system, have approved eight of them. I get a five. Uh, I, just because of the, uh, uh, not the service up to that limit, I don't want to have the car sitting there until I get that limit. So I'm just going to apply in two of them. But yes, they can uh, accept the child card. But that's a pilot program that they are going to specific uh, communities, uh, and Arlington, one of them. Right. Yeah. But so you see an increase in your business, and that's why you're looking for two more? No, I'm expecting as the Charlie. They, this is not something that they have already. This is something that they are anticipating to do. Okay. Um, and they've contacted me, and uh, it, it, is, it is in the work, and uh, I'm anticipating that I might have additional services. That's why I'm applying it to Okay, thank you. Ms. Reyes? 
Uh, I just wanted to note, I don't know if something's missing, but I, I don't see any insurance information in connection with this application. I didn't see that. Um, the, this application, no, I don't have it. If, he, if I get approved, I will have the insurance, the card, so on. Okay, it's standard to provide that with the application. Oh, okay. We need to see that you have at least the 2040. Yeah, which we but do know he has with his so previous. That's what I'm yeah. thinking okay. he's thinking where he already said. I, I have the basic coverage of other five, so. Okay. So I, I will be uh, getting those insurance cover anyway. Once I register, it has to be. I should have asked this question with the earlier. So, we, uh, how are you, how long have those five been on the road, and how are you seeing your business it's, so far? It's a couple of months, and I'm receiving. A, you know, it's been uh, we've been approved January, and I think it's a three month as yeah. as we set up. Uh, we're receiving all right uh, as a startup company, uh, but our hope is, you know, we 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 will be getting more. Okay. Mm. Further questions from the board, Mrs. Mohan. I sort of have a global one. And I guess if I sp say something that's wrong, if you could just let me know. Sure. But I just want to look at this, that right now, this request by Mr. Magan, um, requesting to, you have five already in Arlington. That's right. The request by Mr. Kalantar, um, you're requesting to, and you've been driving in Arlington for four years, so you already have. And I have three currently. So you have three currently. And then um, request from Mr. Shah Jahan, he's not here, he's not feeling well. And then the request from Mr. Nath, um, it's a new request. You don't have any in Arlington yet. Right. God bless you. That's, I just wanted yep. to put that as a, a point. That's, that's correct inventory. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. McGon? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very right. much. So now we so now we have uh, discussed under item six, seven, eight, and nine. We've talked with four different businesses. We have requests for two, one, two, and two licenses. We currently have five available. Uh, we could tackle this as a single motion or separate motions, depending upon what people are thinking. Is there anyone chomping at the bit? Ms. Mrs. Mahan. Just to put something on the table. Sure. We only have five left. Mm -hmm. um, pointed out two already have some cabs on the road. Two, two do not. I'm just thinking as a starting point right now, if we give the three applicants who are here, one each, so we don't give out all five. That's just a starting yeah. point. I'm not saying we shouldn't give out all five, but I'm just trying to think, where do we start from here? Um, you know, we have three people here, and I think they're, are they all asking for two, 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 and two? So either we maybe give them all one each and have two so we don't totally um, drain the reserve or the supply, or somebody comes up with something else, we give out all five and we two, 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 and one, so. So we've got a motion for one, one, one. Well, I'm gonna start with one, one, and one. I think it's a great motion, thank you. I'll second the motion, but I just want to Mr. Carroll. Um, speak. To, so that that's along the lines I was thinking. My only concern was on this last application where it doesn't have the insurance information here, but I guess we have that on file because of the other. I feel like we could also somewhere. issue it, our, the license contingent upon providing of the insurance. Okay, then I, I feel if, if we could amend your motion, I feel mm -hmm. comfortable with that. Okay, I would amend it that um, in the granting with, the, with Mr. Magan, and if I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize, that um, he reissues provide another copy of the insurance. I just want to be clear, so it's one, one none, one, one, correct? Yes. With, one, are we tabling the, seven, the number seven request? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I think it's good. Okay. Uh, I will support the motion. I would also support an amendment that put the other two out there, if anyone else was in the, wanted to join me in that. I don't, I don't worry about the licenses in the bank. I'd rather have them out on the road and seeing how it goes. But I, I, I'm happy to support the motion. But if there's a, some other interest in at putting more out, I'm, I'll join it. I, um, I was thinking along the same lines as you, Mr. Dunn, um, and I like the um, for um, the Hackney Taxi business operator license for Limolex and the Hackney Taxi business for Boston Ride. Um, I think that those two applicants have come here for, you know, they see business on the up and up and they are anticipating, you know, a growth in that business. And I think I would support doing a um, two for each of them. Is that a motion? Uh, yes. Is there a second? 
But I second Diane, so yeah. I can't. I can't. Yeah. So hers is on the table. Yeah. Uh, do you, all right. I, I believe that we could do this procedurally. If um, Mr. Byrne, do you submit that as an amendment to Mrs. Mahan's? I will. Uh, yes. Does anyone second Mr. Byrne's amendment? Um, I'm see. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. No, I guess right. not. Okay. Win Any, some, lose some. So we've got discussions for one, one, one. Oh, sorry. Well, sorry. Let me no, just get please. clarification. Why do we only have five left, Juliana? Because. You've been giving them all. <coughs> um, been giving them <laughs> yeah, it's ten pretty, a week. Yeah. Other than that, why do we only have five left? Um, because um, in the board's regulations that it adopted or it amended um, last March, yeah. um, it decided that it would give out no more than 42. They were termed as medallions, but either way, a sort of vehicle specific oh, yeah. license. And yeah. um, with the renewals for the existing companies and then the ones that have come in since then, I haven't done the math myself, but I know your staff keeps close, close watch on it. So it's given that out 37. It would, yeah. 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 Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. And could I add to, uh, along Mr. Burns' um, point, perhaps when you're reviewing and doing all the different things in September, and we'll have the history, and we may have given out the remaining yep. two by then anyways, that may be part of, um, maybe we can get some sort of requirement under whatever's allowed under business protocols and legally, in terms of, I don't know if we can get sort of a report of how much service have you provided to Arlington, you know, how busy have you been? You know, um, if everybody's really, really busy all the time, you know, maybe 42 is in the magic number versus um, the other end of the spectrum that's on really that question. So. Very interesting idea. Thanks. That can be changed by the board. That's not any right. yeah. But I think, but what Mrs. Mahan suggested there would be interesting is the state of the business from the businesses. That that would be some interesting information if they're if they're interested in sharing that. Mm -hmm. if, if I understood. Yes, just to Mr. Byrne and Mr. Kiro's point, yeah. where if you want to get a, as many taxis out there, hackney licenses available. So that people, you know, have Mr. good Dunn's opportunity point. and things like that, and so perhaps that can be reconciled okay. in September. Um, it occurs to me that I made, uh, I haven't yet. It's a public hearing, and I haven't yet called for any public participation. This is a public part, uh, hearing. Is there anyone else who's here who wishes to speak on any of these licenses? <coughs> I'm not seeing a lot of excitement from the crowd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is there any further discussion from the board? We have a motion. Yeah, I would just say to Mr. Burns' point that on the limo lex um, application, I would feel comfortable in the near future if um, the applicant were able to come back to us and tell us that the vehicle was in hand. Okay. So. All right. But uh, as it stands, I'm going to support uh, Ms. Mahan's motion. Any further discussion? So we're about to vote. We're about to uh, vote on awarding one to Shafan Nath doing business as Boston Airport Express, one to Daniel Kalantar doing business as Limolex, one to Abdullah Magan doing business as Boston Ride. Any further discussions? Seeing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. It is 5-0. Uh, could uh, we take a formal, could someone make a motion to table the? Table. Uh, I, uh, um, second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So six, seven, eight, nine, done. Ten, uh, we have a note from council saying that they are not going forward move tonight to because there's some issues. Uh, move to motion to table. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Tabled. Next up, Citizens Open Forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration to the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there's a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Is there anyone here who's under open forum? Mary. How can we help you tonight? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Town Manager. Um, my name is Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor. I'm here this evening. Uh, as a member of the Town of Arlington, a past member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, to speak to the uh, reappointment of Joseph Tulmeri. Um, I want to first say to you that Joe is not a friend. He is an acquaintance. I served with him for 10 years on the Board of Appeals. In the 10 years I've been off of the Board of Appeals, I've appeared in front of the Board only twice, so I don't want you to think that I have a vested interest in his reappointment. I'm here because I served with him and I saw how critical and important his service is to this town. Joe is a wealth of knowledge as far as uh, being a member of the Board of Appeals. 
And given what this town is going forward with the master plan, with economic development and other things, I think continuity is incredibly important to this town. Uh, you know, I can tell you because I served on that board for 12 years that not everyone is delighted with the decisions of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And you're not going to be because variances are difficult things to, to judge. Special permits involve some subjectivity. But I can tell you at all times that he acted professionally, he's knowledgeable, and I think that his continued appointment is essential to this town. I see the planning director here. I don't know if she has an opinion uh, one way or the other, but uh, I, both boards work hand in hand, the planning department, the zoning board, the building department, and the, and the planning board. So I would say to you that, and I ask you to give serious consideration to his reappointment, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you very much for coming. Mr. Lucarelli. So done. Nice to see you again. So I soon. know. It was a pleasure being with you the other night at the Touchdown Club. I, he, he, Mr. Lucarelli was the MC of the event, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I sat next to Tim Murphy, who is the guest of honor, and he was an interesting guy to talk to. Uh, Harvard was, football coach. Yeah. Quite so a guy. what did I say? I'm sorry. Harvard, Harvard football. What, I don't know if you gave his uh, oh, thank title. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it was an excellent time. Thanks. Um, I'm speaking at this portion of tonight's uh, hearings because um, I understand that Article 16, um, which apparently is not on the consent agenda regarding discussions regarding the appointment, I believe, of two individuals or the reappointment to the zoning board. Is this the appropriate time for me to speak uh, to those articles because... Uh, it's good. I, so just so you know, my, um, I, I, when we get to Section 16, what I plan on doing is discussing a process for appointment. I don't plan on actually making any appointments or accepting motions for appointments at that, uh, during that section, but now it would be very appropriate. Okay. Thank you. And I really only can uh, introduce myself as uh, Eugene Lucarelli. I'm an, a private attorney, and um, I'm the attorney member of the Zoning Board. Um, and uh, like uh, Mary Wynn Stanley O'Connor, I'm speaking here on behalf of uh, both uh, people who are up for reappointment, uh, uh, Paul Malloy and the uh, distinguished and longtime serving chairman of the board, Joe Tulameri. I, like Mary, um, do not have a personal relationship with Joe, um, but uh, having appeared before him for many years on um, the client side of the table, uh, I was always, and my clients were always treated with respect and fairness. Um, and now that I've become a member of the board, I have seen that same treatment by him uniformly to everyone who comes before us. Um, as Mary indicated, Joe Tulamari is a unique individual. He is an incredible asset and has been to the town of Arlington for many, many years. His knowledge, his ability in community planning it is not replaceable. And I am really, to be blunt, shocked that there is any possible consideration, and I don't know this to be true, and I apologize in advance if it is, any possible consideration of not appointing one of the great volunteers of my life in this town, uh, uh, Joe Tulamari. So um, as Mary indicated, uh, we need him more than ever as we go forward. Uh, the master plan is coming up. I believe that it will involve zoning. I don't know anybody who lives in this town um, and in the, in the immediate area who could better serve the town with his breadth of experience, not only in the zoning board for many years, but since the 70s on the uh, ARB, uh, chairman of both. Um, his service and his qualifications are second to none. I will be shocked if... Uh, in this board's wisdom that uh, he is not reappointed. Obviously, Paul Malloy is on the board. He's here tonight. Paul Malloy, Jr., he's an engineer, and he's a credit to the board as well. And I know he's up for um, um, uh, another term as well. So um, I have greatest respect for all of, these all of you on this board. I know several of you personally. And um, I would be shocked if, if you take anything into consideration other than Joe Tulamari's performance as chairman and his service to this community, then you'll be doing us and him a good, uh, uh, not a good service. So I urge you to um, look carefully at his reappointment. It is imperative that he remain during this crucial period when we're going into planning. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Gurley.
Is there anyone else who wishes to speak under Citizens Open Forum? Carol. Thank you. I'm Carol Kowalski, Director of Planning and Community Development. Uh, I, I would like to speak in support of uh, Joe Tulemira's reappointment as well. Uh, I would guess I'd say it's a little bit of occupational selfishness in a way, particularly because of the master plan, as some of the other speakers mentioned. Uh, Joe was critical to writing our zoning in 1974. He knows it better than anyone. He also knows its flaws, so he'd be really helpful to me in the master plan process and um, implementing zoning improvements and zoning changes. Um, I also want to be sure, um, I'm not sure if it's clear the degree to which we recognize that Joe is an expert uh, across the Commonwealth and even outside of Massachusetts in uh, redevelopment. And to be able to tap that through the master plan process is uh, a, a real asset if we could, if we could continue to uh, make use of his services. And um, I, I don't know if you, uh, it, this may be widely known, but there would probably be no Kendall Square as we know it today if it weren't for, for Joe's work on the Cambridge Redevelopment Authority. And I'd really like to tap that for, for Arlington. And uh, so I'm hoping we can uh, keep keep Joe. Um, that's on the master plan side. On the ZBA side, as far as I'm aware, we haven't had any lawsuits in a long time. And as far as I'm aware, we haven't had any constructive approvals. And those are two good signs that uh, things are going pretty well in the ZBA. So I, I just wanted to have an opportunity to tell you that I, I would very much support his reappointment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other speakers for Citizens Open Forum? Seeing none, Citizens Open Forum is closed. Uh, we already disposed of number 12. Uh, Diane, we took that one out of order. Uh, 13, for approval, Arlington, Bi uh, ABAX, uh, sorry, Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee bike safety checks at the Linwood Circle area on June 8th. Christopher Tonkin. Hello, Chairman and uh, members of the board. Um, we're I'd like to repeat uh, the effort we've had a couple of times before. I think our last effort, unfortunately, was rained out. But um, we've held this event a couple of times, and uh, we try and point out to uh, cyclists using the path um, safety issues with their bicycles, help them a bit. Uh, we're not trying to run a uh, repair shop on the bike way, but um, sometimes a little bit of help is needed. Um, helping them, uh, people make sure they're wearing their helmets correctly. Um, that is an issue of many people either wear them incorrectly or put them on the handlebars, which doesn't help anybody. Um, and uh, we're also planning to hand out the, um, the pamphlet we developed with the police department on the uh, responsibilities and rights of bicyclists and uh, motorists. Any comments, Mr. Steve? Uh, no, I think this is great. And I, I'd like to uh, thank you, Chris, for being really proactive in this. I think, you know, especially over the last year, we've heard quite a lot, especially throughout the, um, you know, Mass Ave car, uh, corridor conversation that you know we really have to get along better with you know all modes of transportation whether you're you know walking, riding, bike, driving, car, um, et cetera. And I think this is a real proactive step in you know moving forward and ensuring that. I'd really like to thank you for uh, doing so. And, um, thank you. I'll move approval. Second. Second. Further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. It was a great program. Thank you so thank you. much. Next up, um, amend Board of Survey Street Names, Jake Upton. How are you doing? Doing great. Thank you for your time. Um, Welcome. I'm here representing the Arlington 360 project, um, really both components. There's a residential component that is uh, on top of the hill and there's a lower component that's a newer, newer approved component um, um, that is being built as an assisted living facility uh, with Brightview. Um, as the operator uh, brand and shelter um, is the name of the company that owns that company, um, that operating company. Um, I don't know if you all saw in your package. Um, maybe I could. Yeah. So if you put it there, we just have to figure out the microphone. I don't know if it's the cable is going to run. Are you going to put that up? Well, you, if you put it up there. Uh, we need the people at home to hear you. Is the problem? That's the that that. 
I mean, it isn't the problem. It'll lift it off, Jake. Yeah. Can I pick this up and yes, move absolutely. it forward? But you can lift the mic right off the stand, Jake, too, if oh, you yeah, want. Yeah, but the wires, you just have to be careful. Okay. How about that? Okay. Well. <laughs> um, How are we so doing, cable people? Are you happy? Still working? It's okay. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go much. for it. Um, so we're here to request a street name change. Um, this has happened to this project before, but we've been working with the town historian um, and with Brightview, the um, operator of the assisted living facility, which is here, um, to rename, um, really create a whole hierarchy of names for the site that have some grounding in the, in the history of Arlington. Um, we also are looking at some marketing considerations for Brightview and an interest of them to rename what has been called Hospital Road, this section, um, to be renamed Sims Road um, in honor of Stephen Sims and the Sims family who bequeathed the, the, the financial gift to the town, I think over 100 years ago, to create the hospital and to buy the land. So uh, we were proposing to rename this section of Hospital Road Old Sims Road and then um, to have an honor to the old hospital uh, use of the site, we're going to rename this back section of the project that goes out to Woodside Lane, the top of the project, um, Old Hospital Way. And um, this had been named Hattie's Way previously, and Hattie is a reference to Stephen Sims' daughter, who was a school teacher in Arlington for a long time, who became sick and eventually had to be hospitalized in Boston, which Stephen Sims had to commute to Boston to see. So he um, was really honoring his daughter with his gift to the town. Um, we were going to rename the, the Vista Park um, up here at the top of the site that overlooks the Boston skyline, Hattie Sims Park, um, in reference to her and the importance of her role in the whole history of the site. We also have a park that's a lower, uh, what we referred to previously as the Lower Vista Park, which is the former site of the medical office building. Those of you with long memories can remember that. Um, that we are going to name, this is where the nurses building had been for a number of years. And Nora Brown was the matron of the nurses uh, operations there for I think over 50 years. And so we're going to rename this Lower Vista Park Nora Brown Park. So we're trying to touch a lot of the historical points. Um, have it fit with what the re, uh, redevelopment of the project is and, and, and fit for, it, for its use in the future. And um, so there's really two sections of road that we're renaming. Um, old, uh, old Hospital Road to Sims Road and Hattie's Way to Old Hospital Way up this section. Um, any questions? Well, uh, we've got to, I'll, t I'll take the motion. We've got a motion to move approval. Second. We've got a second. Mr. Greeley, do you want to? I got confused. But I'm old, Jake. You know that, all right. <laughs> I thought you wanted to name that old hospital road and then Hattie's Way, Old Hospital Way. Did I misunderstand you? Now you're saying nope, this is uh, the, the, the what had been called Old Hospital Road up that to. That was called, called that, Old Hospital that's, Road, not just Hospital That's what it's called currently, I guess. Okay. Uh, we would like to rename that Sims Road. Um, and Leading into Sims Circle. Yep, yeah, so it would be Sims Road to Sims Circle. And then Old Hospital Way would be the short section here. And are there any addresses on Ho Old Hospital Way that it needs a name? It's just an entrance, no. isn't it? Right. It's more of a historical I, I, uh, yeah. demarcation of the, the history of the site. Okay. I don't. I don't like not having anything hospital in there. I just. I, I mean, people. We know Sims was a hospital. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I just. We're removing hospital from all the roads, I think. Well, it would no, it would be Old Hospital Way, way at, at, the, at the top section. Remaining. That's why we want to name that Old Hospital, to maintain okay. that continuity. Okay. Diane, did you have a comment? Um, I just want to say that um, I think the last trip Clarissa and I made up there for various different reasons. Um, I was really impressed with what the developers are trying to do, which is to um, highlight and maintain the important significance of the donation by the Sims family as well as um, you getting some more women um, recognized and working with Richard Duffy with, um, is it Nora Brown or Norma? Yep. Nora Brown, Nora. Uh, as well as having the Hattie's designation area. And what I gleaned from that visit is that, not just with the naming of the roads, it's looks in the areas and the circles and the vistas, there also will be some sort of, you know, the little sign will be out there, but also it will keep 
you know, you can go up, get more history. It's not just reading the sign that we're putting up. It's some other things that you're doing. And I like that you've really highlighted. You could probably say it better yeah. than you I appreciate that. And just to add, I, I, did, I sort of cut that portion of it short. But in the, in the uh, parks, we also have historical signs that celebrate, celebrate the 100 years of history uh, that Sims Hospital was in place. And I think it's 100 years this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, uh, we have a collection of uh, four, four or five signs commemorating Nora Brown and then the history of the park, um, uh, the history of Sims site um, over in 25 year increments. And we've worked with Richard Duffy on some signage and some verbiage and historical um, references. I didn't want that to go without. Um, no, I appreciate that. Very important. I, I think we're doing an even better job of sort of keeping the history alive and letting people know. And you've done a far better sign design with Richard Duffy than we have the square one that says the guy came out of the tavern and killed five people in the center there. <laughs> I mean, nobody wants to take a picture in front of that. So, um, and I really appreciated that. Clarissa and I were saying, you know, kudos to you all for getting some women in there also and preserving the donations by the Sims family and um, the motivation for him with his daughter Hattie. Well, and I also would like to, to thank uh, Richard Duffy for his generous uh, amount of time that he, and thought and um, consideration he's put into this. It's really been, um, you know, it's really been a, a gift to the project, his, his commitment to it. So Thank you. appreciate that. No, I just echo I just echo what Diane said, and just note that our packet actually has the designs uh, for these signs, and they're really impressive, both backwards looking and also forward looking with QR codes, so the folks can get more information and and. Uh, drill down into it so uh, th thank you for this comment. yeah no I, I actually have a question I think um, Adam might answer but first Jake thanks for uh, coming in and obviously all the work that uh, you've done on the historical side of this um, Adam is there any you know how will there be any administrative work added to town employees by making these changes um, you know whether throughout the engineering department or you know because if, if I remember correctly these this is, will be the second time the roads, the names of the roads have changed. Have they changed once before at the beginning of the project? I can't speak to whether or not they changed mm -hmm. at the beginning of the project uh, officially, but the answer is yes, there will be administrative work associated with this. However, it, uh, it, it's interesting that you asked that now. Um, so last year at town meeting, uh, town meeting approved uh, some street name standardization at the request mm -hmm. of the GIS coordinator. Uh, so I've actually just been working with the GIS coordinator to start fully implementing that uh, and we're going to be sitting down it's the clerk's office that really has the greatest degree of administrative work that needs to be done because they have to update a lot of records uh, depending on how you know big an area is so I, I I can't pinpoint exactly how much work there would be but there, there will be some administrative work that goes along with updating police database clerk's database assessor's database and then our GIS database so that everything matches up okay no I am uh... I guess I think that, you know, I don't, well, if it was an exorbitant amount, I probably wouldn't be supporting this just because I don't think it's the names of everything that will really attract people up there as opposed to, you know, the market value and the actual apartments, which I'm sure will be lovely. But um, no, that's my only question. Ms. Greeley? Well, but it's my impression that work would have to be done no matter what they're being named, right? because of the construction and there's, new, there's a new street, that whole circle going up there that needs a new name. So yeah. uh, uh, Hattie's Way, or whatever it was, uh, mm -hmm. right. Hattie's Way, you know what I mean, Steve? This would have to be done anyhow. So, but if, you know, if it is that great a cost, but uh, you know, I took quite a few hits during the past campaign about my support of this, but I see something like this and I see Jake and the kind of job they've done People, it's going to take their breath away when they go up to Hattie Sims Park, uh, which I've seen that's dirt at this point. I mean, well, I don't, it's probably better than that at this point. It's a couple months ago I saw it. But this is, I believe, what the town and town meeting envisioned when we decided to buy the property and do what we can to control the development. And this is an example of a development being well done, and you deserve a lot of the credit for that, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just, I, I'm fully support. I love the signs. I will just say, uh, and it's one of those things you just come, I bike down the bike path. We've got some historical signs. Sometimes they get hit with graffiti, unfortunately, and taking the graffiti off takes a lot of the sign with it. And so I just hope that you choose a design that is robust in the fact, face of what will inevitably come sometime in the next many years. Uh, we, we definitely are. Uh, Richard Duffy's pointed that out and <laughs> we may be ordering extra signs just in case. So okay. we have to we'll keep the standards up. 
Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All so. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate Thanks, it. Jake. I just note this is the easiest signed discussion we've had all week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. That is true. <laughs> I did watch that from home. <laughs> all right. Item 15, Selectman's Awards. Mr. Greeley. Yes, my friend. So, as you know, we put together a committee that has now made to us 10 recommendations. And we're, we, what we'd like to do is uh, hold the awards ceremony either the uh, third or the fourth Thursday at the end of June. Uh, coming up next week on Tuesday night, we have Town Hall in Character, which is a, a 100th anniversary event. On the 7th, on June 7th, we have the actual celebration of the Town Hall and Gardens. I'll talk about that under new business. And this would be another of the Selectman's Awards, which we try and do once every five years. So we need to uh, both vote on the recommendations of the committee to us and uh, I would ask that any member here who has another nomination for any of those categories to please bring it in and we need to vote on that slate uh, next, for, at the next meeting, next Monday night. I've checked with Juliana and um, hold me to, we can't, we have to do this in public, right, the voting, so. So, so it is my intent that while we do it in, vo in public, we're not gonna say the names out loud. Right, we're gonna present a slate, Yes. right? So that we could see and then vote, and then if indeed all the slate is voted, we will then announce the names, correct? Right. right. Okay. That slate is still a public record. If someone requests it, they can, but that would be a spoil sport, so I don't think they will. Well, if anybody wants so to vote against any of the nominees, we don't want that person to be embarrassed. That's exactly. you know. Okay? Thank you. Any question? Uh, I think it's a great plan. We're looking forward to it. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to the award ceremony as well. Yeah, it would be great if all of us could be there. Each of us give out some of the awards. We'd certainly have some of the committee to help us on that as well. Can, can I just double check on that? You were saying it's going to be a Thursday night. Is yes. that what it is? Yes. And um, what's the time tentatively? I just want to make sure I book far enough ahead so I can be there. Is this I, I a don't have day? the actual date. Okay, but it'll be Thursday evening. Yeah. Marie? When I talked to Jack, he was thinking of the 13th or the 20th. Starting at? Do you have a start time yet or no? I would say, was it seven or nine? What, seven or nine? Okay, seven is better. Okay, okay, six is tough. Okay, thank yeah. you. And I'd say the 20th. We need to push it out a little further then. I didn't realize that. So did you talk to Patsy about available times at Town Hall? Okay, because I've asked Patsy to look at the date. So she, she doesn't know yet. She'll get back to me. Right. So I'd say the 20th or the 27th. We'll have that date definitely by next Monday, okay? Thank you. Any further discussion under the awards? Uh, next item, Zoning Board of Appeals appointment process. So we have uh, terms that are expiring on the zoning, or, or that have expired, and they're ripe for reappointment. It has been noted, uh, one way that we could tackle this is that we could have put a reappointment up in the uh, consent agenda. However, it's clear to me from some from correspondence received in the, that that would not that some of these reappointment the reappointments are controversial in this case, unlike others. And so, I'd like to suggest. Uh, we also have collected. We've opened the uh, interest. We advertised in the advocate, and we received some interest from um, some parties. So what I would like to recommend as a process is that uh, the board ask me to interview each of the candidates and then to make recommendations to the board as to what we should do. So moved. Second. Yeah, well, um, I'm in favor of reappointing both of the candidates, so I don't know where that's appropriate. Uh, and uh, you're saying that you want us just to appoint you to do interviews? Uh, that, is what I'm, that is what I'm asking. Well, you interview the two who seek reappointment. Absolutely. And I also ask, um, could we do it in line as we've done with town manager, that if somebody at the end of the process, any individual selectman would like to nominate someone? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, so. I'm just trying yeah. to. Sorry. Let me, sorry. Thank you. No, you're right. I, I, there's some other words that I had meant to say that I, that I forgot. Uh, there are some boards and committees within the town that have very explicit appointment or reappointment processes that are spelled out. 
Um, a number are appointed by or recommended by the town manager, approved by the board of selectmen. Others are the board themselves make recommendations, like uh, like as in the subcommittee, and then those come to the board of selectmen, and the selectmen approve the process. The zoning board of appeals, none of that is articulated. The only thing that is articulated is that it is the, the purview of the board of selectmen to do it. So at some point, we're going to have to come to a vote where we get at least three people to say yes to the two seats. And uh, so I, th I, I, I mean, the, the process that I'm saying, putting forward is that I would put forward a motion and then ask the board to either approve it or disapprove it. And if it, if it fails, then mm -hmm. I think that would open it wide open to anyone else who wanted to make nominations and, and, and go from there. Mm -hmm. And I, I would just would say similar to, I'm sorry, I'm uh -huh. sorry, uh, all the other TAC, there's some form of an interview process, yes. whether it's done by the town manager, whether it's done by the chairman of, say, TAC and, and a member of the board of selectmen that gets sent on to the board. I think it's good that we define a process and then with all the caveats of what you've said before. I apologize. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, Mr. Burnett has spoken. Sure, yet. of course. That's right. Um, no, and um, quite frankly, I think it seems like we there has been precedent set for how to do this. I think that we, you know, had reappointments earlier today, yeah. and we've never asked, or at least in my time, those people who want to be reappointed to come in and say it. that's you know this is changing that precedent. The and so are sorry. Um, so are we now moving forward every single reappointment? We're going to put it open. We're going to put it in the advocate and say, hey, why don't, why don't you apply and go through this process through every committee? Because I think, I, I don't think that is, you know, great policy moving forward. Yeah. And I think that under this circumstances, um, even having this conversation um, when there are not seats currently open because there are technically those two seats before we we haven't voted them anyone off the board so is this conversation not premature in that it looks like we are technically you know not taking the public's opinion into you know we're not considering it when we're doing this because we are essentially you know saying that okay we're going to begin this process for seats that in under any other circumstances would just be re-upped immediately and we're just not going to listen to those concerns which you know we began to hear tonight so i am um, i i don't support this quite frankly and um i won't be voting for it and i think it is um, poor policy so i guess i have two comments one is specific, is it being specifically a response one is, um, it is not my intent to uh, follow this process for all appointments going forward of the Board of Selectmen. I chose this process for this particular reappointment because it has, because of controversy associated with correspondence received and people who have approached me. Um, I think it would have, it's appropriate to put things in the consent agenda if you have reasonable expectation that under consent that they will sail through. And I do not believe that these appointments would sail through consent agenda, and that's why I chose not to put it there. So that that was, uh, I, 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 in the future, if I have things that I think will go through without a controversy, and in this case, I'm the path. I'm choosing this path partly because I'm trying to manage. Um, clearly, there's a, personal reputations and. Uh, how people feel, uh, like the, 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 there's a real r risk of bruising ego and bruising uh, friendships within the town and, and working relationships within the town. And I'm trying to walk a path that uh, manages those as best we can. One other comment about whether the seats are open or not. Um, it is explicit within state law and, the town and our town manager act that seats become open at the end of their appointed term. They are, the people who are in the seats can continue to serve until there's reappointment, but there is an explicit window that at the reappointment period, the appointment, the, the, at the end of the appointment, a reappointment process is an entirely appropriate uh, thing to do. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, I, I just wanted to also note that there's a, there's a big difference between this and most of the appointments that we, that we approve. Most of the appointments that come to the Board of Selectmen are actually town manager appointments subject to the, the approval of the Board of Selectmen. So the town manager is already doing the vetting 
on those ahead of time. And while I know that most, so, so that's, but that's happened before it comes to the consent agenda. That, that, that's different from this, where this is actually a direct Board of Selectmen appointment. Uh, without getting to specifics, I know of at least one um, situation since uh, I've been on the board where there was um, you know, a long-standing member of a committee who wanted reappointment, but there were others who were interested, and the town manager forwarded you know, another candidate to us. But that appeared on a consent agenda because it's actually it, it's, it's approving the town manager's recommendation. We don't have that luxury here because the, the law and, state and town bylaws vest that exclusively in the Board of Selectmen. So the only way that we can do that vetting is to either appoint a subcommittee or to designate the chair to, to do that vetting on our behalf ahead of time. Ms. Greeley. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, um, Diane and I have been through a process where a reappointment was not reappointed on a three to two vote by the Board of Selectmen. And it so, wasn't fun. I watched it on No, TV. it wasn't fun, nor is this one going to be. Yep. The, I, I'm going to vote, for, and, and I agree with Stephen, but there is precedent, Stephen. We have advertised and asked people if they're interested. It is only fair to consider them now. However, I am only going to go along with your recommendation, Mr. Chairman. If on that night I first get a chance to move, I want these two reappointed. So I believe the way you said it is you want to make a motion to appoint those rather than if you just uh, would consider you're going to, after your interviews, you're making a recommendation to this board, but I want you to know I'm going to make the motion these two are reappointed that night. So I just want to, I just think that a reappointment vote should come ahead of replacement votes. That's all. Okay. Mrs. Mahan. And just to wrap this up, I think, and I agree, I, I was starting to think of two or three or four different instance I can I'm up to four now but I don't want to kind of rehash that and yeah but one was real ugly but anyway I, ahead, well yeah, yeah and then um, well a conservation commission appointed oh, yeah, too yeah, but yeah, anyways yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I want to say is first I want to preface this with um, I don't know who you're going to put forth Me either. Um, right. I have right. a sense right. but I don't I don't know a hundred percent we may find there's some commonality I mean I don't know anything yet in terms of that so um, I understand it's, it's a difficult process and I think what the board is trying to do, as we have tried in the past, and usually we're successful, is to make sure that we treat everybody with respect and dignity. You know, we don't want anyone coming here and having an unpleasant experience. It is televised. Um, you know, every single person who's on this side of the table and that side of the table and the mic is just the same, no better, no worse. Um, it's just, here's the situation, here's the process. Is there a be be best way to define it? And I think we're doing the best we can along with Mr. Grilly's caveat of um, reserving any selectman um, who wants to put forth a name. And I guess we'll leave it to the purview of the individual selectman if they want to have a conversation with the chair or whatever, you know, just. Within the confines of the open meeting law, that would be appropriate. I mean, just one on one, not, <laughs> yes, you know, not right. anything. I'm not saying anyone should have that conversation. Yeah. So I made a suggestion, but I didn't actually make a motion. Oh, I, oh, okay. Okay, uh, I did, nice so, second. All right, so I'll, let me make the motion. Okay. It's okay. actually on the floor. Diane made oh, the motion you? and I, I made second. Oh, that's right. She okay. did. Okay. I, apologize. Sorry. I had forgotten that already. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that, Ms. Mahan. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Four to one. Okay. Moving to correspondence received. Uh, Peter Silva uh, regarding the selectman position of bicycle lanes uh, from the Belmont Board of Selectmen regarding the or to the, the school, uh, Minuteman School District. Uh, letter to the ZBA from Deborah Fairbanks, request for appeal of violation, and Ann Peterson, uh, Vi Victoria Road concerns. Move your seat. Second. Second. All, uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'm not sure what action the chair would like the board to take on the Victoria Road concerns. I th what, Mr. Manager? Yeah, so um, I've already forwarded that to the Traffic Enforcement Unit, and they've begun work on it. Uh, Lieutenant Conroy and the Traffic Enforcement Unit has already made some recommendations to DPW for putting back up some missing no parking signs. And he's also planning on, uh, planning on monitoring the area to make further recommendations for addressing her concerns. So if the chairman or whoever I, you, I think, someone could get back to. Okay. The, 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 whoever you deem appropriate, you, I'll leave it in your lap too. I will, I will reply again to her. And then um, if I could just take advantage of the opportunity, because quite a few people have come up to me before and after the election to talk about East Arlington and Mass Ave. 
and my role as a selectman and my support for the project. And one of the things I've pointed out that seems to resonate with a good 80% of the people who kind of question pre and post election votes is that um, my support, I believe, along with my colleagues' support is because of the state funding and the improvements and the next to no cost to the town. And I pointed out to many people, the town of Arlington has already been paying itself to make Mass Ave similar to Lexington, one lane, one lane. When you enter Mass Ave in the Heights, as soon as you cross in by Capri Pizza, we're one lane all the way down, and we just recently extended it. It used to um, stop at Stop and Shop and continue on two. There's the two lanes, but then it goes back to one and one in front of the high school all the way down. We're doing that at the 100% um, on behalf of the town. There may be some grants in there and other things and the like. Um, so this is sort of the trend of what we've been doing with Mass Ave and what, you know, Lexington. And um, so one of the things I was pointing out is we are looking at Mass Ave as a whole. We're not just looking at East Arlington. We're not targeting anything. We're looking at the use, promoting safer use, promoting safer pedestrian and everybody else. And the way I see it is something the people and the merchants down there were saying, please help us. It's a speedway. We can't get across. People don't stop to park. We have to address that anyways. And we had this opportunity of the state funding. Um, so that was a further motivation for me, along with there was a compromise. And I say to people, you know, I like to get all 10 things when I'm involved in politics, but I've learned, you know, you can't be a stumbling block in the way because you didn't get all 10 things. It's like, what did you want? Did you want to win or did you want to get the goal accomplished? So I just wanted to take advantage of where we had a piece of correspondence in there. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion and correspondence? All those in favor of <coughs> uh, we have moved move for receipt. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. New business. Mrs. Propelka. Ms. Rice. Nothing new, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Manager. So I'll start by saying uh, Chairman Dunn mentioned that he was sitting next to Tim Murphy at the Touchdown Club on his I, right. Uh, in case anybody was uh, curious, I was to the Chairman's left <laughs> at, the, at, 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 at that dinner. I think I'm in the doghouse. <laughs> Why didn't he mention that dinner? <laughs> and who is more athletic? <laughs> Because last week I saw Adam twice a day for the like whole every week. Day. It was serious. and so like it was like oh yeah, Adam again. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Um, and the only other thing I wanted to mention is so we're we're coming close to a, a year since we met for um, the goal setting session last June. Uh, so uh, I just want to put in the board's head we should start thinking about some dates uh, for June to. Uh, reset and re-up the goals. It's been a year already. It's been sure? a year. It's Didn't we say year. we're going to do a bye year? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so uh, perhaps uh, next Monday uh, we can have a brief agenda item to discuss dates. I think we um, should do that. For, You're absolutely uh, right. For some that wasn't time. late summer. That was early. We approved it late summer, but we had our actual session where we met for a couple hours yeah. uh, in June. Hmm. Didn't somebody spill coffee at that? I think somebody did spill coffee. <laughs> Not that it's seared in my memory. Sorry. <laughs> and that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, just want to um, just highlight in our other correspondence receive our packet that Commissioner Ed Davis sent a letter to Police Chief Ryan regarding the um, actions of our officers um, from Arlington. And one of the things, we've all had conversations with the chief throughout um, the ongoing horrific events that went on. But as we all personally know, the individuals um, from the town of Arlington who went when the Boston police needed help with the active ongoing investigation, when the president came, um, there are quite a few of our officers um, that did that. And nobody really knows about it. And maybe they shouldn't. But I, I would like to leave it with uh, Adam and the police chief if they feel there's anything else. I mean, I know some, some personal stories. I know we all sort of have a smattering of we know this individual did this and this individual did that. But I really feel from what I know, or what I think I know, that um, we had every single outstanding officer over there who did it to keep the public safe and to do their job and not ask for any recognition whatsoever. So I do appreciate the Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis um, sending the letter to our chief. And I guess I'll leave it with the chairman and, and the town manager. Um, and they may do this at their award ceremony next year. Uh, but there really were some mm -hmm. ast astonishing and amazing stories of what our officers did. And they certainly represented the town of um, Arlington well, as well as pr um, protecting uh, everybody in the Commonwealth, especially in this area. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that. 
Okay. So I, we, we did acknowledge it at the opening of town meeting. Okay. Um, to town meeting and, and televised, and I know the local press covered it as well, but mm -hmm. we, I guess we can talk if there's a further. I don't know if there's, in terms of the, some of the stories we've heard, um, I mean, I certainly was proud and, and fascinated with it, but um, again, I'll leave it to the chairman, and besides that, no other new business, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, I mean, uh, Chief Ryan and all of his offices did an outstanding job, and Commissioner Davis was so impressive, um, and even to the point of taking the time to write that. Also, there was a nice letter about Jimmy Dodge and his response to a water uh, breakage, uh, leak, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. leakage, breakage, what's the right word? Right? <coughs> right. But anyhow, he talked about, he made a phone call and Jimmy was there in 15 minutes and shortly thereafter the trucks were there and they made a temporary hookup and blah, blah, blah. Tino uh, came not, out, he named everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, uh, um, very impressive, uh, all of our employees, really. And just want to remind people, okay, next Tuesday night, the 21st, is what's called Town Hall in Character. That's one of these 100th events, and it's a chance to uh, uh, meet Mr. Uh, Mr. Kiro there as one of uh, uh, Robbins, brother, one of the- uh, Nathan Robbins. Nathan Robbins. And the chair uh, of the school committee will be playing and my Mr. brother. And Judd Pierce, right, is also, right? And also there's uh, the Robbins sisters. I myself will be there as Joseph Patrick Greeley, a former member of this board of selectmen. Wow. I know. Hold your, hold your enthusiasm down, but uh, so it, but it's very historical, and it's people will come in, and you'll go in groups around town hall, and uh, we'll be talking in character. So, and then on June seventh, we are still uh, in really uh, deep into rehearsals for the centennial celebration of the town hall and gardens, which was built in 1913, and uh, that's a combination of a historical lecture and the images. Uh, by uh, Richard Duffy, and then uh, he's the uh, Master of Ceremonies on the history side, and I'm the Master of Ceremonies on the music side. Uh, there'll be a nice reception in the garden first by Trist. There'll be a, uh, uh, adult beverages at a cash bar. Maria, am I forgetting anything? A nice hors d'oeuvres. And nice hors d'oeuvres. Where do you buy tickets? Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, you can buy, you can purchase tickets through Marie Krapelka in the Selectman's office at any one of the three leader banks in the town of Arlington, and we really thank them very much for their sponsorship or online through Patsy Kramer. But um, tickets are going fast, so we encourage people to please purchase your tickets. It's forty dollars a ticket. Thank you, Mr. Cura. Oh, I'm next. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Greeley. That's, I, I did change my hairstyle to try to get into the uh, more of the 19th century vein for, uh, for um, next week. And in case anybody's wondering, Nathan Robbins is the one in the Sluckman's hearing room. His painting is there standing in front of all of the dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> and so in that spirit, I'm going to... Is that a hint to your costume next week, sir? <laughs> well, no, actually the day before I'm going to warm up. You'll recall you put me on the spot here when Mr. Livergood appeared before us regarding... Yes, yes. Yes, regarding the library card challenge and dressing up as Clifford the Big Red Dog. And I know that you wanted me to come to a Board of Selectmen's meeting, but... Uh, I decided that it would be much more appreciated with the one and a half to two and a half year old. So I am going to join them for one of their story times the day before. So uh, we want picture proof. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I probably should have kept that under wraps to keep the paparazzi away, <laughs> or the paparazzi away. Um, my my only uh, other piece of business. I I wanted to thank Officer Rateau and Lieutenant Conroy uh, met me this this past week. Um, I think we mentioned a couple times that ATED is putting together on July 13th, the afternoon of July 13th, the uh, Arlington Live Summer uh, Arts Block Party uh, over in the Broadway Plaza area. It will involve uh, some street uh, closures in that immediate area, so they were helping to map that out. I'm hoping to come to the board ho ho hopefully next week with uh, a specific uh, proposal and request for uh, board action uh, around that. I know that. Um, the organizing committee is working with the Chamber of Commerce. Island Consent of the Arts is in the process of uh, lining up uh, some sponsors as well, but uh, we will need a, f a few actions by this, this board to make that uh, possible. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. No new business. I as well do not have any new business this week. Move to adjourn. Second. <laughs>
<laughs> Mrs. Kropelka? See that seat makes sure you. I haven't looked. I haven't looked at all, but, uh, don't, so, but I'm not going to tell you. Someone might be DVRing at home, and I don't want to tell them. I know, them. so I'm not going to tell you. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.